Bandits abduct women and three children in Abuja. Kidnapped Nasrawa students regain freedom. Naira scarcity worsens as POS operators mop up available cash. And from the international scene, United Nations General Assembly to meet on Tuesday over Gaza. Hello and welcome to Trust TV News Update. I am Sumaya Abubakar. Thank you for joining us and now the details will start with security. Now bandits have attacked the Zone 5 segment of the Kubwa Extension 2 relocation estate along Arab Road in the Federal Capital Territory on Sunday night, kidnapping a woman and her three children, including a six-month-old baby. The gunmen struck between 8 p.m. and 9 p.m. on Sunday, shooting indiscriminately and causing pandemonium in the area. Speaking, a resident said kidnapping has become a usual occurrence in the area every December. Meanwhile, about seven students of the Federal University of Lafia, Fu Lafia in Nashara State, who were abducted four days ago, have been released. The students were released on Sunday evening through efforts by a collaborative team of the military and other security forces. The president of the Student Representative Council, Ibrahim Ogabo, verified the development. The group of students, consisting of three females and four males, were at the school's clinic as of the time of filing this report. Also, uh, the abduction occurred at uh, Wednesday night uh, when students were taken from their off-campus accommodation in Gandu village, leading to immediate protest by their fellow students. Now, away from that, the police command in Katsina State says it has foiled a kidnap attempt along Dutsa Mark and Kara Highway, killing three suspects in the process. ASP Abubakar Sadiq Aliyu, the command spokesman, confirmed this in Katsina. According to him, based on credible information that some suspected armed robbers and kidnappers wielding dangerous weapons such as AK-47 rifles, blocked the Dutsa Mark and Kara Highway in an attempt to kidnap unsuspecting member of the public. The command promptly mobilized a joint team of police operatives and members of the vigilante and responded to the scene. The Nasrul La Faith Society, NASFAT, on Sunday staged a special prayer for the nation to overcome the challenges confronting the country. The organization also described as unfortunate the accidental bombing of villagers in Kaduna by the military, warning that never again should drones meant to protect the people become killer drones. At the special joint Asalatu program organized by Lagos, Ogun and Oyo Zone, comprising about 10 states, thousands of Nasfat members stormed the society's Islamic center Assese along the Lagos Ibadan Expressway. Special prayers were offered for peace to reign in Nigeria. The president of Nasfat, Niyi Yusuf, called on Nigerians to support the leadership of the country with prayers to lead the country to the right path. Yusuf also called on the leaders to lead with integrity and fear of God. The Lagos State Traffic Management Authority, the LASMA, has terminated the appointment of five of its officials for corruption and other offences. In a statement on Monday by LASMA spokesman Adebayo Taufik, the Traffic Management Authority said letters of termination of appointment were released to the officers on December 8, 2023. Taufik said the recommendation to the termination of the appointments of the officers was ratified by the Lagos State Civil Service Commission. He also said 
seven other officers were reprimanded for other infractions while other cases against the remaining 14 indicted offici officials were undergoing additional administrative review. In politics, the ongoing political drama in River State has taken a very interesting turn as 27 members of the River State House of Assembly have defected from the People's Democratic Party PDP to the All Progressive Congress, the APC. A member of the Assembly, Enemi Judge, confirmed that the 27 lawmakers were under the leadership of Martin Ameohule. He said that the decision was taken during their sitting on Monday morning. The transmission company of Nigeria, the TCN, says it's Gwagwalada Kukwaba Apple 132 KV Transmission Line 1 has been vandalized between Towers 23 and Tower 25. In a statement, a spokesperson of 4TCN, Ndidi Mba, said the vandalization of the line is suspected to have taken place about 1 a.m. on Sunday when bulk power supply of the line was cut off, necessitating an early morning investigation by TCN linesmen. The vandals had also carted away conductors, causing power outage at Kukwaba Transmission Substation. Mba said TCN has restored bulk power supply to Kukwaba Substation as temporary solution through Apple Substation. As the world continues to commemorate the 2023 Disability Day, persons with disabilities are decrying the hardship that they are facing as a result of the current economic challenges bedeviling the country. The PWDs who disclosed this during this year's commemoration organized by Get Them Young Initiative in Just said although a significant percentage of Nigerians are affected by the situation, they are more affected by the economic reality. Adu Musa completes the report. Events commemorating the International Day of Persons with Disabilities are often organized to mobilize support for critical issues relating to the inclusion of persons with disabilities. The day is also aimed at promoting awareness raising about disability issues and draws attention to the benefits of an inclusive and acceptable society for all. But, but persons with disabilities say, despite the commemoration, they are yet to see the impact of the day. I'm seriously, you know, um, I'm calling for the government, you know, especially the federal government of Nigeria, you know, to come to our aid, you know, especially, you know, people living with disability uh, like this, you know, we don't find it easy. So we are, need, we are pleading for the government to come, you know, in helping in, uh, people with situations like this expenses which ordinarily they wouldn't have experienced and uh, I must confess to you that we are not indeed having it easy just like a person with disability in a country like Nigeria is a one step backward and then secondly the problem has deteriorated since from the COVID-19 lockdown there was an issue without considering persons with disability then from the lockdown we enter cash crunch then now uh, fuel uh, subsidy removal so the thing is become multiple on us the executive director of the initiative nafisat abdelaziz spoke on the group's effort to ensure the well-being of pwds yeah, you know a substantial amount of persons with disability are part of our uh, communities and then most of them are neglected they are being segregated from the communities and why do we do that they also have the right the equal right we have you know so i'm calling on everyone to be disability advocate and also equally calling on the government you know to make sure most of these policies that are in place are being implemented in our places of work in our business places and everywhere in the society for years various groups and individuals have advocated for the inclusion of persons with disabilities in government policies. 
Ado Musa, Cross TV News, Joss. Hibiscus, locally known as Zobo, is paying the bills of some youth farmers in Jigawa State. The young farmers are combining the pursuit of Western education and farming to cater for their daily needs. Adamu Imam meets with the Zobo farmers at a weekly market known as Kaswan Laraba in a suburb of Duse, the state capital. The report. Hibiscus, popularly known as Zobo leaf, can be processed and used for domestic and commercial purposes. In Jigawa State, farmers usually cultivate and take Zobo to the markets to make ends need. In one of the weekly markets in Duse local government area, youths explain that Zobo business is making them several line, especially after harvest. We usually patronize many weekly markets for Zobo business. Our regular customers usually mobilize us to buy from far and sell to marketers or end users. But the major problems in this business is the supply chain. Zobo is so demanding. That is why the price keeps changing intermittently. As a result of the current economic realities, education alone cannot take us to the promised land. That is why we combine both of them. In recent times, we realize that we have nothing other than farming activities, particularly subsistent agriculture because it gives hope and meaning to our lives. Some of our challenges in this business include adulterating and mixing the spoiled ones inside a big sack and bringing it to the market for us to buy and sell to our customers. They also say that cultivating hibiscus is easy, urging others to embrace it in order to improve the economic well-being of residents in the state. Adam Imam. Trust TV News, Jigawa. You're watching News Update on Trust TV. Coming up. POS operators source cash from petty business amidst growing Nara scarcity. This and more after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back. If you are just joining us, this is News Update on Trust TV. Here's a recap of our top stories. Robotu bandits abduct woman, three children in Abuja. And kidnapped Nasrawa students regain freedom. Now moving on to more stories. The Lagos State Government has served contravention notice to property owners along the corridor of Shoreline Estate, Onikoi Estate, Parkview and Banana Island, whose properties fall within channel setbacks. The government issued a seven-day ultimatum to house owners along the corridor of the state to remove their fences encroaching on drainage channels. Commissioner for Environment and Water Resources Tokumbo Wahab stated this over the weekend while addressing newsmen after an inspection of some areas in Ikoi, including the state house Dodan Barracks. He said most structures in the areas did not observe the standard three meters required by law for the setback of the secondary collector drain. Amidst growing concern over scarcity of Nara nodes in the country, a POS operator is sourcing the cash from the proceeds of his small business. Yahoo Zagarba, who runs a petty business at Kefi Park in Abuja, helps Nigerians to access narrow notes in the wake of cash scarcity in the country. Ibrahim Ismail reports. POS service providers are not immune to Naira scarcity when it strikes, but the 23-year-old Yahoo Zagarba is strategic in his operations. He runs a petty business at this motor park while channeling the proceeds to fund the POS services. 
So now that business now go help me see money. Because if I go bank, now small money I will see. But because I just say something yes. normally now 500, but now you know go with the row 500. Each day now 40 you go with the row. It be my 40, no be always. If you go today, see money, tomorrow you know go see them. Oh, you go today, you go see line too much. Garba's strategy of sourcing Naira nuts for the POS business gained popularity, and his tactics support transport workers to access the cash easily. So far that uh, I'm operating in this garage here, uh, this POS guy has been helping us. He makes us not to run out of cash. Any time that we came here, we we'll normally get what we want. And he's always make sure that he make cash available for us. Ice! And he's not all that charging us, he's charging us well. Although the old and redesigned Nera notes remain legal tenders, according to the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, Nigerians are finding it difficult to access cash. But POS operators like Yahuza believe there is always a way out. Ibrahim Ismail, Trust TV News, Abuja. The palace of the Oni of Ife in Ocean State is notable as the center of Yoruba history and culture. The palace serves as the residence of the traditional ruler of Ife with uncommon daily routines in line with the Yoruba culture and tradition. Now, Trust TV's Hamid Oyegbade, who was in Ife, observed a typical morning in the palace of the Oni of Ife. His report. <laughs> The palace of the Orni of Ife contains mythical objects and spots of historical significance, including shrines and deities. Various cultural events and activities take place at the palace daily in line with the Yoruba tradition and culture. The day often starts with drummers, poets, Praise singers and trumpeters performing in front of the Oba Adeyeye Enita Ogunwusi's residence to wake him up. When it comes out, various people, including the traditional chiefs and religious leaders, pay homage to him and in return, he prays for them. Our duty is to wake Oni up with drums every morning. The drumming signifies to him that it's done of another good day. A traditional chief explains that these routines are carried out to preserve Yoruba culture so as to prevent it from going into extinction. Ileife. In Ileife, we worship various deities every day throughout the year except only one day that is free. Only God and all Ni of Ife knows that free day. When we celebrate one festival today, we celebrate another one the following day. In the last eight years on the throne, Oba Adeyeye Enita Ogunwusi has sustained these daily routines, making the palace lively and entertaining. Amid Ojiegbade reporting for Trust TV from Ileife. From the international scene, the United Nations General Assembly will meet on Tuesday to discuss the humanitarian crisis in Gaza. UN officials said a special meeting of the General Assembly has been called for Tuesday afternoon by the representatives for Egypt and Mauritania or in their respective capacities as chair of the Arab group and chair of the Organization for Islamic Cooperation. According to Diplomatic, the General Assembly, whose resolutions are non-binding, could vote on a text for a ceasefire resolution at the meeting. 
And finally, in sports, the management of the Sunshine Stars Football Club has said that the ball boy who was shot during the attack on their team's bus by suspected hoodlums is in stable condition. The team official, Edith Agoye, disclosed this in his post-March reactions after Sunshine Stars suffered a narrow defeat to Bendel Insurance on March day 13 of the Nigerian Premier Football League. The Sunshine Stars, Gafa, hailed the Edo State Governor Godwin Obaseki and his deputy Philip Shaibo for coming to the aid of the team by offsetting the medical bills of the injured officials. Agoye said that they were determined to get something from the game with Insurance FC as consolation for their terrible experience, but insurance proved difficult. And with that, we wrap up news updates on Trust TV. Do not forget to follow us across all our social media platforms and join our YouTube live stream for more news programs and documentaries. I am Sumaya Abubakar. Thanks for watching. She normal normal did it put